we're uh, at our starting time. Let's uh, go ahead and jump in here. Uh, introduce myself here. I'm Hunter, uh, one of the community leads here with Onyx Off-Road. Um, been uh, in the off-road industry for uh, about seven years now. Uh, spent some time doing some uh, desert racing and uh, working in the upfitting and aftermarkets uh, product world. And now uh, get to work on some fun stuff uh, on the social side and help lead uh, master classes. Hey everybody, I'm Jake. Um, I'm also on the community team here at Onyx. Um, I've had a lifelong background in racing motocross and, and snowmobiles for a very long time. So I'll bring a good perspective if there's any uh, two wheel or sledders in the audience. Um, but yeah, happy you all are here and looking forward to this masterclass. Quick run through of what we're gonna cover tonight. Um, this is a 101 class, so we're kind of um, covering a, a wide range of, of skill levels and familiarity with Onyx. Um, so if there's anything that might feel too easy, um, just wait, we're going to jump into the app and run through it. Um, but we're kind of starting from a place to get your bearings. Um, if this is your first time opening the app, um, to kind of get your bearings straight and know where you're looking, what you see. Um, we encourage you to have a the app open as we go through it and kind of follow along. That's the, the best way to get the most out of this and kind of run along with our demos. Um, so we'll just a uh, quick presentation on that, then we'll jump in um, to the app itself and then also do some demos on the, uh, the web map as well. Uh, towards the end, uh, we will be doing uh, a giveaway. Um, so we'll, talk about that a little bit more as we get closer so definitely stick around for that in the last 15 20 minutes or so we'll uh we'll do a q a session and we'll run through as many questions as we can um if your questions don't get answered uh there is that help at onyxmaps.com email uh you can uh, shoot an email over there all right so the, the point of tonight is uh how to use this thing uh, how do you use the, the features and the function in there uh, to know where to go, find new adventures, and um, kind of know what you're getting into and making sure that um, you're equipped for it and your vehicle's equipped for it um, and learn how to go farther. Let's see. Okay, so um, this is just the basics we're going to run through, the, some slides here just to give you a, a bearing um, what you're looking at. Um, this is a screenshot here of the app um, when you first open it. Um, it may feel like a little bit um, overwhelming at first um, with all the different colors and layers. We are gonna run through all of it. So by the time we get through this, um, you'll know what everything means. Um, but you'll see some green trails and some blue trails. Um, and then uh, on the bottom, you see the toolbar there um, of what, um, the uh, the features uh, Onyx has um, green versus blue. Um, they're both trails. Uh, the blue trails are featured trails. Those are um, trails that our trail guides have actually gone down and they collect trail data and go through uh, trail difficulty, technical ratings. They provide a description and photos. This is a great way to learn about an area, get a feel for the trail. Uh, especially if you're just first getting into off-roading or you just got a new vehicle, you're looking for a, a place to get a feel for it. This is a great way to not find yourself going down something that might be in over your head. Um, but also, if you are looking for some of the uh, the tougher stuff, um, you can find those uh, seven, eight, nine, and 10 rated trails in there. Um, then there's the activity panel. Uh, that's that icon there down on the bottom left. You tap that and that lets you filter your activity type. Um, if you're just looking for dirt bike trails, you can just have that box checked and it'll show you just um, trails for dirt bikes um, and different depending on what, what vehicle and trail type you're looking at. Um, then below that are the layers toggles. Um, for the elite users, there's a private land data. You can turn it on and off. That's uh, a great way to see what kind of land you're on, making sure that um, land that you're adventuring on. Um, 
is, is legal and permitted. Um, it's great for camping, just knowing where you're at um, at all times, making sure you're not going into to places that you're not supposed to. And then there's also the active wildfire layers as well. Um, that's great for keeping an eye on um, incidents that may be ongoing in your area, or if you're looking to go travel somewhere, um, this will kind of pull up different incidents that might be going uh, on currently. And then there's a uh, snow mode um, for the, uh, the snowmobile snowmobilers out there. Um, you can toggle over there. There's a whole bunch of really cool features and layers. Um, avalanche forecast, slope angle, slope aspect, um, and the private land as well. So if you're looking for snow-based adventures, that's the, uh, the activity for you right there. Then on the bottom, that first option is the Discover uh, tab, and that's for discovering trails either near you or uh, if you're looking at an area, you can have that area pulled up on the map. You hit Discover, and it'll pull up trails in that area. That's a, a great way to see kind of the feature trails that are near it um, and give you an idea of how to, to plan out the different trails you want to run either near you or uh, at a new destination. Um, that'll show you the, uh, the technical rating as well as the, dis the length of the trail and then a rough estimate of the time that'll take to run it. Obviously, that changes depending on your vehicle, the group size you're with, and just your overall pace that you're going through. But this will kind of give you a, a good idea. Uh, the next one is offline maps. Uh, this is one of the most powerful tools that we have. And we are going to go through and uh, show you how to use it. Um, and this is how you can access the maps when you don't have cell service. So you want to download these ahead of time. And whether you're in kind of spotty service or no service, you just hit go offline and you can see the areas that you're in. And again, we are going to run through this and show you how it all works. Next is the My Content on that bottom row there. This is where you can organize all your waypoints and all your tracks, areas, lines. Um, the more you use the app, the more locations and trails and stuff you're going to have in there. And this is a great way to keep it all organized, um, depending on either the trail type or ride type um, that you may be kind of storing these trails for um, and just helping it so you can find it uh, later down the line. Uh, the next one is tools. Um, this is where you can mark up the map itself. Um, we're going to run through these. Um, this is give you an idea of where that these icons are found. And there's the uh, the go and track feature. Uh, this is great if you're out running trails and you kind of link together a really good loop. This will track it all and you can go back um, and save it for later. Um, tracks your speed, your distance, the time that you've been running, um, elevation changes. This is a great way to kind of track where you're going and kind of put uh, kind of routes and trips together uh, for the future. Um, Onyx Off-Road is compatible with CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, you don't have to set anything up additionally. If the device is already paired with the vehicle, you just go into the apps and hit Onyx Off-Road. Um, that's a great way um, just to keep tabs on where you're going, where, what trail you're on. Uh, while you're, you're you're rolling. And now uh, that's my presentation I had, and we'll uh, go ahead and jump into the app and uh, show you how it all works. All right, so I'll take it away from here. Um, I'm going to do mobile first, and then I'll jump onto the desktop. So we'll spend a little time in mobile first. Um, and then keep in mind, I'm going to open this up like this is the first time you've seen it. Some of you may be farther along in, in where you're at as far as um, how advanced you are on the app, but this is what it's going to look like immediately when you pull it up, including the zoom levels. Um, the only thing here, just ignore. These are some of my personal pins I have. Um, so obviously those aren't going to be here, but this, before we even dive into the toolbar, discover mode, offline maps, anything like that, I'm just going to pause here and actually just run through what all these buttons mean. So first thing is first. So this top right 
search bar, you can either search for location or you can search by landowner and you can also put in coordinates here. So pretty cool if we want to search Missoula, Missoula, Montana came up, here we are. Um, and then the top left, it's kind of this hamburger menu, you pull this up and this is where you're going to find like your map legend and stuff like this. And so we'll get to it later because this app's all, all interactive. So you actually don't need this map legend, but some people prefer to come back here. Um, so this is super nice, um, really cool. If, if you don't want to dive in or be clicking around the app, you just come here, come in here, we break it all down. So that is super helpful. Um, you also, in your settings here, you have the chance to do imperial metric for your coordinates. You can do decimal UTM, DMS, or DMM. You can actually hide coordinates if you don't like those. Um, you can show crosshairs and you can enable pinch to rotate here. Um, I personally keep that off um, and you'll see why in a second, but that can be help helpful if you're, if you're kind of scouring um, the map and looking for tight corners, that pinch to rotate it is super nice. Um, so once we're out of the settings, um, first things first, you got to make sure your filtering is uh, correct and set properly. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see activity and it's going to say dirt. We're going to click on dirt. And since we're, we're in August, we're going to be in dirt mode. Um, this is at this point you were, you know, in a couple months, we're going to be using snow mode, which we'll get to in a second, but for now we're going to stay in dirt mode. Um, and the majority of this presentation is going to be done in dirt mode. Um, so this is where you'll find all your filtering. Um, we got a couple questions yesterday, um, that were saying, Hey, you know, I have a, I have a quad. Um, this is where you'd come in here and filter out. I can't speak for every state, but most states is going to be 50 inches or less. Um, and so this is where it's, if you really wanted that 50 inches or narrower, you can go ahead and, and click this. Um, and then it's going to pop up all the trails that are re relevant to that sizing. Um, but also keep in mind here because, um, I'm a two wheel guy and for the two wheel people out there tuning into this, you know, keep in mind if you're on a dual sport, um, and then I just go ahead and select single track only and you zoom in, you know, the trails kind of go away because a lot of the single track, um, is up and away and into the woods. Um, and so, and you're usually using quad tracks or full width roads to get to those. Um, so if you truly want single track only, you can use that filter, but just remember, you actually can use all the roads if you're on a plate and motorcycle to get to those single tracks. So a lot of people will say, hey, what the heck? You know, there's no trail showing up. Um, a lot of the times they just didn't select, re-select all on this uh, filter type. Um, so that's really cool. And then um, right here for map layers, if I'm on an elite account right now, so you'll see my private land uh, toggle is enabled. Um, and another really cool thing that's super relevant to, to especially where we're at right now in August is fire season. So we're going to go ahead and click that active fire layer. And you can actually, there's a really bad one up north of us right now um, next to Flathead. You can actually see the size of it. You can go ahead and click on it. Um, that's going to tell you uh, the, last, the last update, current acreage, percent contained. Um, so really cool uh, feature here. And then you know, you can use this if you're if you're planning a trip and you're like, hey, you know, I was going to go to Flathead Lake and then you didn't hear about this um, in your local news or whatever. Um, you can just get in here and be, oh, shoot, I didn't know that there was a fire there. So super handy tool. Keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for now. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind. Super handy. Um, and then we can actually start diving into the tools. So on the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see 2D and you're going to see an orientation button. So I'm going to go ahead. And this is how you toggle your maps. Um, that right hand corner. So you can go satellite, hybrid, or topo. Um, topo is really cool, um, especially if you're trying to find water this time of year, because that, that blue really pops. You can see lakes pop up super easy. Uh, satellite kind of hides them, um, but still very useful. Um, once you get out of that, this other bottom right hand corner below the 2D satellite, that's your orientation button. So if I'm out here scrolling the map and I get lost and I, I, I don't know where Missoula is at, you just hit this bottom right hand and it's going to orient. Now, when you get to this point, if, if any of you have your phone in your hand while you're, while you're listening to this, go ahead and take your two fingers, place it on the map and then tilt up and down. Um, so this is a super cool feature, especially um, if you don't want to have go and track mode on and you just like this where you can queue up your, your indicator on the bottom screen and, and get more up on the top of your screen. This is a really good option for that. 
um, hit it again, it's going to orient you back straight up and down. Um, and another really cool thing that not a lot of people know this, this does, and I'll try to, I'll try to show you guys on the video and when I'm demoing it, but double tap that button. And then you're going to see like, kind of like a headlight mode. And so whenever I'm turning my screen, it's going to orient where the phone is pointing and just imagine it like a flashlight or headlights. Um, it's not like, you know, the old Garmin's were the arrow and it actually be towards the arrow. Um, it's backwards. So just keep, um, keep headlights in mind when you're working this feature. Um, and if you don't like that feature, tap it again, and it's going to orient you back north and south. Now, diving into the actual toolbar. So I'm just going to go left to right because um, I, can't, I can't show where I'm tapping on, on the app right now. So I'm just going to go to discovery offline and my content. So if you go to the very bottom, you're going to hit discover mode. So this is a really, really slick feature. Um, you pull all these trail cards up and this is gonna ping the, the nearest trails based on my location. And if you actually scroll around, you'll notice that the discover card changes based on where I'm looking at the map. And so this is super handy if you're off-roading in a new area or you're just traveling. Um, you're like, hey, I wanna, I wanna hit a cool trail real quick. Let's, you know, I have a couple hours, um, let's go hit it. And so, when you scroll around, it'll it'll queue up all these um, trails. Super slick feature. Um, you can also dive into them individually. You can do this. Um, McCain, McLean Creek Road, which is just outside of Missoula. This was the first one it brought up. is nearest to me right now. So you can pull this trail card up. It's going to tell you the difficulty rating, technical, um, the distance, low point, high point, all that stuff. Um, but mo most importantly, what you can access it by. So this is a big thing, um, especially in Montana. Uh, single track is actually pretty hard to find over here. I know Idaho, you guys are a little better with it, but this is super handy because then you can you can tell uh, what what vehicle you can take up the up the road. It'll give you a quick description, and most of these trails will have photos. So that's also super handy. Um, you can also share this. You can share this. If I wanted to share this trail to Hunter and say, hey, after work, we're going to go hit this trail, you can easily do this by hitting that share button, pull up, text it to him, and he'll get this road. Um, super, super cool feature there. Um, other than that, we'll be moving on to offline maps. So right here, this is the one of the most important things of this app. Uh, we hear it all the time. Like, hey, you know, our, our, our app didn't work. And 99% of the time is because an offline map wasn't properly saved. So for this purpose, um, let's just pretend Missoula has zero cell service right now. Um, let's pretend like we're scouting. We're going to whatever do, do whatever around Missoula. And we need an offline map downloaded. So we're going to hit this offline map. You're going to hit new map. And you're going to see at the bottom of the screen here, it's going to give you three options. So five, a 10, and a 150. If you want super, super detailed offline maps, you can go all the way down to the five. And there's no, there's no, there's not a limit on these. So go to town on them. If you, if you want all of Missoula for this example in a five mile radius, you know, do that. Um, and then go bigger. And then what I like to tell, that's kind of like a kind of a cool pro tip here. So back to Missoula, I'm going to save this. I'm not going to actually do it because it'll take a minute. But if I save this, you can, and then that little green box is going to pop up. That's going to show that you successfully downloaded that map and you're going to see it in your saved maps. But what I like to do is I'll go out and I'll do a giant 150. See, these are all my personal uh, offline maps right now. So you see how I have a bunch of little high res zones within my big zone. Um, so then if you find yourself venturing out of your little offline map, at least you'll be covered. It's not going to be as high quality as, as the good, the, the smaller high res maps, but at least you'll be covered and know where you're at. Um, you can also name offline maps at this point. So I can say Missoula area. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then when you pull up here, that's going to that's going to say or indicate it if you um, properly saved it or not. And also at this point, see how uh, my previous old maps from, from last winter actually um, are there. It says update available. So what you're going to do is make sure you update that before you go out. Private land boundaries might have changed. Some public boundaries might have changed. So just make sure those are updated before you go out. Um, but it does have to have the check mark to make sure that you that you did it. Um, and the last thing I want to hit on offline maps before we move off, um, when you're in an area that 
kind of has service, kind of doesn't. You go up a hill, you'll get a text occasionally, you'll get a phone call occasionally, where it's just kind of bad. Your phone's going to auto default to try to grab a signal, but it'll try to grab a weak signal. So what you're going to do is you're going to force your phone into offline mode. And then that's telling it, hey, rely on my offline maps and use this only. Don't try to grab a weak signal. Um, so that's super handy. Uh, and then you can still, it, it's essentially putting your phone into airplane mode. Um, and that just, it's just way slicker. Your, your phone's not going to get messed up when it, when it grabs that, that weak bar. And then, let me see here. One sec, phone just disconnected. Okay, Hunter, you see the phone back up? Yep. Cool. Go. All right, cool. And also, this is another thing. See how I, I, I teed up that fake Missoula boundary? When you see this, this candy cane border, that means it didn't finish downloading. So it's pretty obvious to see what maps are successfully saved and which aren't. So if you're like, what the heck is going on there? And you think you're covered, that you are not covered in that area. Um, so pretty cool there. Uh, moving on to my content, which is the middle section of the bottom toolbar. Um, this is where all your stuff's going to live, all your waypoints, all your areas, all your tracks, everything is going to live here. Um, you can sort here. You can select certain waypoints to share. Um, and I would actually recommend, because um, I, I have multiple Onyx accounts, and some of my accounts now, I mean, I'll have, I don't know, four or 5,000 waypoints. And a, a kind of a tip I always tell people is to get ahead of organizing your waypoints because when you're in an area when there's, you have thousands, they all kind of blend. And so, you know, for my snow pins, for example, I'll have a blue color or a purple color or something like that. For dirt bike, it's gonna be brown or black. Um, just stuff so when you guys are looking at the map and scanning at a high level, you're like, oh, yep, there's my moto pin, there's my sled pin or whatever. Um, super cool there. Um, and you can also customize waypoints where we'll get that to the in a second. Um, but other than that, that is that is pretty much it. This is where all your content lives. Like I said, um, you can you can rename stuff in here, um, all that fun stuff. Moving on to tools. So you're gonna pull up the tools. There's a lot going on here, a lot of different tools that you can do. Um, there's a line distance tool, area shape add photo waypoint, add a normal waypoint, and then mark your location. Um, for line distance, pretty self-explanatory. You can you can use stuff. And this is actually a really handy tool, and you, you actually might find yourself using it more than you think. Um, for example, I was doing a, a project, and I'm, I'm building a new shop in my house, and I use this line tool to actually get the area of the square footage of where the new shop's going to be. So like, Random, random off story for how a line distance can work, but like it's it's pretty cool. And then that same same rule applies to area shape, um, and also area shape. If you you know you have a RV or something like that, and you you know you have twenty people showing up with fifth wheels, um, and you're gonna go up a trail, you can actually go up a trail, and mark that area out and see. Okay, do I have room? Do I have room to camp at the end of this road? Um, that kind of thing. So super powerful tool there. My service isn't too good. It's not loading, but um, you guys get the point. And then the next tool in the toolbar is going to be at a waypoint. So this is probably the most handy, simple tool that we have. Um, when it's kind of in this float mode, you're gonna, I'm just tapping the map right now. So I'm just tapping, tapping all over, and you can drop the pin wherever you want. Um, I'm actually in the Onyx building right now, so we can drop a pin right on top. We can come in here, we can rename this to whatever we want. We'll go Onyx, let's make it a, a house. You can put notes uh, in here. You can add photos to this. And then photo waypoints are probably the most handy thing. Um, you can pick from a bunch of themes. Uh, camp area, cave, fish, all this stuff. Um, really cool where you can get into some super detail of customization. Um, but I would say the most important thing is just to take a picture. You're probably already taking a photo already. So just pair it with the waypoint. And then when you have thousands one day, you can look and be like, oh yeah, that was that. That was that super steep climb or whatever it is. Or that was that really cool camp. 
Um, so super powerful tool to keep all your content organized there. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to chat about in the toolbar is mark your location. So this is going to be, if you're driving down a bumpy road uh, and you're you're in a hurry, you don't want to stop, you don't want to take a photo waypoint or anything, you just want to drop a waypoint quick, you pull this up and this button on the far right is just going to be mark your location. And it's not going to prompt you to, to edit it, anything. This is just going to be like, hey, mark my location fast. I'll deal with it later. And then you can come back and edit that waypoint. Um, so super cool there. And then the last function I'd like to talk about before we actually start diving around into some trails um, is this go and track mode on the bottom right hand corner. So you're going to do this and it's, it will do the same orientation type button like the headlight mode I showed earlier, but it's going to tilt and it's going to kind of go into like a hockey puck mode. Um, you're going to hit record track. Uh, we're not going to do it because I'm, I'm standing here. Um, but you're going to hit record track. Uh, and then when you're done with that, you're going to hit pause. And then this is where people will, will, will stop a track on a dirt bike and then they'll like keep driving home. Right. We've all done it where it's like, why do I have a two hours of a straight line? Uh, what the heck's going on? Well, it's because we forgot to turn off our tracker when we loaded the bike up or quad or whatever. Um, so don't forget to end your track. Um, and just in case you do, keep driving down the highway, you can come in here and actually trim a track. Um, so if I had a, an, actu an actual track right now to show you guys, I could go in and I can hit edit and then I can trim that thing down. And it's pretty good about, it'll pick up on pauses. So like if you were clearly loading a bike into a truck, it would pick up where your truck was. And so you can backtrack your truck and it'll make all the corrections and you're good to go. Cool. So I'll get out of go in track mode. Um, let's go down to, let's go down to Utah area. Pretty mm -hmm. popular area. Quick note, Jake, I think you are still in offline mode. So it might be. Uh... Yes, it is. You're right. But it's still working. Cause I, cause I have all these boxes already downloaded, mm -hmm. uh, but, but good call. I'll go back into, um, into this mode. Um, so cool. We landed in Moab. I have some, some of Moab downloaded. Like I said, I have multiple accounts. So this one doesn't have all of Moab downloaded. Um, but actually here's a perfect example backing up to the trimmer track. This was a, a moto ride I did, I think last year, or the year before, um, but it's in this blue. So like, if I wanted to come in here and I was like, Hey, this isn't accurate. It's going to show you how long it took me to do it, the distance, travel, the elevation gain, your average speed, all that stuff. But if I wanted to trim that track, see so that, that button on bottom right hand corner, you're going to hit that. And this is where I can actually back it up. Um, I'm not going to do that because that was a, actually an accurate ride, um, but that's super slick. You can share this whole route. If you're like, hey, I did this cool, cool moto route in Moab, um, send it to buddies or whoever you want. Um, you can do that. And you can also change up if you don't like that blue breadcrumb, um, you can change that as well. Um, all right. So going into actual trails. Um, so if we come up here. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, with uh, Moab area, sand flats, all this stuff. And actually, I'm going to dive into the desktop for, for playing around with the actual trail. So just a second. Let me pause the share. I'll bring it back up. And while he pulls that up, I just want to note um, here is the, uh, the Q&A section. Um, so if you have questions, go ahead and drop in that Q&A bubble down there. And that uh, that that way, our uh, we have a few people working, uh, trying to plug away, answer questions. Um, go ahead and drop those in there. All right, Hunter, do you see web map yet? Uh, not yet. Okay, how about now? There it is. Cool. All right. And actually before, because um, I since I have this oriented back to Missoula, um, I want to show you guys this cool feature until we get into the desert where this will, will not look as cool, um, the feature that I'm about to go over. Is, but um, this is going to be the exact same layout, but this is where you have the power for 3D mode. Um, 3D mode is insanely helpful um, if you, if you want to 
plan, um, camping, hiking, whatever. It's it's super valuable. And so we'll give you an example. Instead of letting this thing load, I actually have a 3D map already queued up in another tab. But as you can see, this is the mountain actually over my shoulder right here. So this is Mount Sentinel. Um, super powerful tool. All the land ownership and all that stuff is going to overlay this 3D. It's going to look really, really nice. Um, and something that is also cool that you can do. Um, we all know how 3D can kind of not lie to you, but it can be kind of deceiving. Um, you look at this hill and you're like, oh, that's a piece of cake to hike up that. You know, that 3D doesn't look so bad. And then you go up it and it was brutal. Um, so this is where you can actually click on this bottom right button 3D mode. And you can actually do 3D elevation exaggeration. Um, so it, it, it stretches the mountains up and probably right about there is where that's probably more accurate in 3D mode of what you're what you're looking at. As you guys can see, it's pretty dang steep back there. Um, and the only way you would go max is if you're in the flats, um, you need some hills exaggerated or you need some coolies or or somewhere down in the desert where you need some big ravines um, to, to pop and actually show. Um, that's where you would do that. But getting back into 2D mode, um, Real quick, I'm going to zoom. I'm going to zoom out, and then I'm going to go back to Moab area. And before I zoom back into Moab area, if you guys are like, "What the heck are all these blue things that are drawing my eye in?" Um, these are actually all featured trails. Um, featured trails are, are what Hunter mentioned earlier, where users are submitting, they're doing um, difficulty ratings, they're submitting photos, like all these cool things, and so. This is a really good example. If you were traveling cross country and you're going through Colorado, up through Utah, maybe into Idaho, and you see this and you're like, oh, wow, like there's some, there's some pretty awesome featured trails in Southern Idaho. And you can zoom in and hone in on these areas. Um, so these are just to draw your eye in. And then when you actually get to this zoom level, they're gonna disappear. Um, and then it's like, oh, hey, here's that trail. Um, and so if we click, click on this trail, Keep in mind, if I if I didn't mention earlier, um, all of this is interactive, right? So if you're coming here and you're like, what is what is this green stuff um, mean? You just simply click on it and it's going to go, oh, that's Caribou National Forest. Um, same rule applies for BLM land. If you're like, what's all this yellow? And you guys will get better and more efficient at it. You'll just you'll just know. Um, but if you don't and you're and you're new to this, um, click on it. Oh, that's BLM land. This this chunk is almost 60,000 acres. And this also works for private land. Um, so a lot of a lot of ranches out in this part of Idaho. You can actually click on these. And this one happens to be an LLC. You can see where their tax address is, how much acreage they own. Um, pretty, pretty cool. Um, that's super helpful um, if you're off-roading in the area where, I don't know, maybe not every trail's mapped in there. Um, and, you, and you think you're gonna cross over into someone's private land. Maybe there's fake signs up. Maybe even someone, I've seen ranchers put fake gates across roads um, and you, you verify, you're like, wow, that's actually a county road. Um, that's legit. Um, so something to keep in mind, um, that private land boundary is, is very powerful, uh, very powerful tool. Let's scroll down to Moab area. All right, cool. So you'll notice some other colors popped up in, in this Moab area. Um, this purple popped up, and this is actually going to be Arches. Um, again, you don't know on it, click on it. It'll say Arches National Park. Um, this will also do this with um, Res Land, which is uh, we have a lot of in Montana. So it'll show um, a lot of the Res Land boundaries. Um, you can actually come over here. Here's Whitewash Open Riding Area all this purple stuff. There's a ton of these in Southern California, but this is a good example since we're right here. Um, same deal, purple boundary, you can click on it. It's gonna tell you when it's open, what you can ride on it. Who's the managing office? This is also a big one because on BLM land versus national forest, there's gonna be different, uh, different time constraints on how long you can camp there for. And it might differ state by state, but I think Montana and Idaho are at 14 days for BLM land. Um, and Utah is probably the same, but just keep that in mind um, for when you guys are, are scouring and, and scouting for uh, campsites, keep that in mind. Um, 
And actually, since we'll stay here, there's there's a ton of single track in this area. So this is a good example. But you know, say you just wanted to ride single track only in this area. This is going to be this black and green dash line. So you can click on it. It's going to say, hey, 40 inches, the trail length, what you can access it by. So that's going to be dirt bike. It's going to say this is the enduro loop. Um, so really cool there. Full width, just the, the green roads and the blue roads that you guys have been seeing are actually the same, but with the blue overlay, that just means the featured trail. So like this is the trail that we, not that we don't have data on the green trails, but this is going to be super, super detailed. Um, this is where photos are going to pop up, um, like I showed in previous featured trails. But if you guys are like, hey, what the heck is the difference between these two? That's the only difference. We'll do that and then we'll go back to Moab area. Okay, sweet. I'm going to actually hang out here for a sec um, and we're going to go to the last feature that I wanted to touch on desktop before we move into answering some questions. Um, it's actually going to be the export and import function. Um, so you're going to click on here, you're going to hit my content. And this is where, you know, we'll have a KML or GPX file. So a lot of people will pull race course files or previous files from a Garmin unit or whatever. If you have those GPX or KML files saved on your computer, I actually don't at the moment. Um, but if you were to import them, you just hit this import function button at the top left of my content, you're going to hit it. And this is where you're going to either select from your computer or just simply drag your KML files in here. Um, and the upload is pretty fast. So if you guys have pins that you're worried that you're, you're oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose all my pins. I had years on this other product. It's all good. You can load them in here. Um, they're of course gonna be on X formatted. So they're not gonna have like, if you had a camp waypoint or something else from someone else. Um, so you will have to go in here and at least edit them, but you will have the accurate coordinates of those pins that you upload. Um, and then same thing goes for, for export function too, if you want to export your, your stuff out of here. Um, but cool. Other than that, um, that is pretty much it. Um, I don't think I hit on weather. You can pull this up in the bottom right-hand corner. Moab is cooking right now at 98 degrees. Um, and just kind of your standard weather report. Um, also super helpful for, for trip planning and camping and all that stuff. Uh, this week, it'll bring it down to an hourly. We have moon phases in there. So a um, lot of cool stuff packed into this, um, this weather function. Um, and then the last thing here, same, same thing applies to the mobile. Your search function works the same here. So you need to do coordinates or find a landowner, um, whatever. So um, and then we don't, we will get into snow mode in another masterclass, but this is kind of a preview of what it, what it looks like. Um, if I were to select snow mode, um, so you see slope angle and all that stuff comes on the land data is going to stay the same. Um, then we have some avalanche forecast stuff and then keep an eye on this one. We have some really cool features, um, coming into snow mode that are going to help, uh, help some sledders big time. So, um, cool. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll pass it back to Hunter. Um, I think we're right at our mark to hand it off. So take it away, Hunter. All right, let's pull this back up here. All right, and um, for those who think that maybe ran through a couple of things too quick, or if there's anything that you want to see again, uh, this is being recorded and uh, it's going to be on our YouTube channel and we'll actually be emailing out a link um, to, to tune in and you can watch it there. Um, so if there's anything you need to go over again, it'll be living on our YouTube channel. But um, let's get into our, our giveaway. Um, tonight we are giving away 20 of our uh, hats off camo hats. Um, there's no purchase necessary, but an Onyx off-road account is required. The basic account is free. Um, and there's a link there. that will also be in the chat of uh, how to enter. Um, so 20 of you will be winning uh, with a camo hat here. Uh, for those watching after this has been recorded, um, the, uh, the giveaway is closing tonight at midnight. Um, but here, um, we always like to kind of bring it home of how Onyx works in real life. And we like sharing uh, kind of how it saved our butts. Um, 
If you have some events or anything that either Onyx helped you, go ahead and drop in the chat. Or if you've had been in situations where you really wish you had Onyx, uh, go ahead and drop that in the chat. We always like seeing people's stories and um, seeing where Onyx has helped or could help. Uh, it helped me one time. Uh, I was uh, in the foothills of uh, Southern California uh, going up some fire roads, and uh, I ended up rolling over this uh probably about a three foot hole that was covered in brush and uh, ended up snapping the, the coil over my front right. And um, we were looking at it, trying to think, how do we get back down without having to go over such a, a gnarly trail that we just came up? Um, and my buddy pulled up Onyx and we actually found uh, another route that we didn't even know existed. We'd been up there a ton of times, uh, but the app pulled up another way down. Um, and it was actually a feature trail and it showed that it was a, it was a level one, an easy one. So it gave us a, another route home that let us kind of limp the truck back and get down, uh, to a tow truck. Uh, and Jake, if you have a, uh, story of how Onyx. So yeah, I got a, yeah, I got a quick one. Um, it's actually pertains to snow. Um, but uh, a couple of years ago, um, I think there was like 10, 10 or 11 of us. We, we do these big group rides every year and we try to hit different parts of the country, um, or mainly West, I shouldn't say the country, but mainly West. And anyway, we ended up outside of Driggs. Um, we were snowmobiling a big group of us. We went way back into the, into the back country. Um, and then a storm rolled in wind was howling um, and it was it was that type of wind and blizzard conditions where you can't just turn around and follow your tracks out because uh, they're so wind blown to over and the ridge lines and the finger ridges going down back to the parking lot we had no idea where we were going leading a big group out um, that kind of gets to the point where you're getting nervous and actually what what saved our butt was we actually had a track saved from the day before of riding the ridge down so there was there was four fingers to choose from we had no idea which one to go down um because there's just snow was just blowing up it was blowing so hard um and we were actually able to whip the phones out follow a track from the day prior and it got us to the parking lot and i mean we couldn't even see the, the truck until we were i don't know 150 yards away from it so pretty scary but it can save save your bacon in a pinch it's, uh, it's a heck of a tool right on all right, we're gonna open it up to uh, to Q and A here. We're trying to we'll try and answer as many questions as we can. Um, if we don't get to your question, uh, shoot it over to help at onxmaps.com, and uh, someone will uh, get an answer over to you. Uh, let's pull it up here. All right, um, here's one. Um, what would you use the property information in the elite version for? Yeah, you, I can take that one, Hunter. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff um, that you can use that for. I mean, it could be something as simple as like checking like, hey, who moved, who moved in up the road for me, right? So like, it, it's pretty dang cool. Um, but on kind of like a bigger picture where you actually might need something like that, um, I got another quick story that I can tell about that. Um, a couple of years ago, I'm, I'm also a big, a big hunter. Um, had a mule deer hunt out east, uh, eastern Montana. Ended up hitting this buck. Um, wasn't the greatest hit. He ran, hopped over some rancher's fence um, and was was laying there on the other side of the fence. Um, and I actually was able to pull up the ranch name, look him up in yellow pages. And I called him. I was like, Hey, um, this is, this is what happened. Um, and he's like, yep, no problem. Go over there, get the buck. Um, so that's just one use case. Um, but there's a ton of different things you can, you can use that for. And, um, I mean, e even as simple as, you know, checking your, we get all the time people are, Oh, you know, my, my stuff's not updated. You guys are out of date. Um, just, you just give us some time on that because most of that gets piped in from county updates. And so if you get um, if you get a notification or the county gets a notification, we'll get the notification and we'll update as soon as we can. Um, but yeah. Right on. I uh, have another one here. What's the difference between basic, premium and elite? Um, so basic is our free version. Um, that comes with our, our base maps and waypoints. 
uh, tracking. Um, and with that, you get one offline map. Um, when you bump it up to the, uh, the premium account, uh, that's where you can get unlimited mm -hmm. offline maps. And then you also get our featured trails, which are those blue trails, um, photo waypoints, and 3D maps, and government land. So you can see um, which government agency owns which land. And then that elite version, which is our top tier, um, that has everything that premium has, but then it also has all those property boundaries and landowner names um, and lot information. So the size of an actual uh, uh, piece of land that you're looking at. Yeah, and actually, and one more one more comment on that too, because um, I mean, an off-road example, um, I just did the Rubicon Trail a couple weeks ago, and that's actually a prime example of where private land boundary lines are cool. Because if you're looking on the Rubicon Trail, um, a, a big piece of that actually got bought out. Uh, I can't remember how long ago. So long story short, um, the Jeepers Association, Jeep Jamboree, all them, and the Rubicon association they they bought that that chunk in the middle of the rubicon trail so that was kind of cool like that was it was for a jeep jamboree usa event so that was pretty cool to see like hey we're coming up on their private land like we're good to camp anywhere on their land because we got the green light so um, passing through gates and all that stuff is is super valuable so right on perfect let's see Another one, can you toggle between satellite, topo, and hybrid while in offline mode? Jake, if you want to grab that one. Yes, you can. Uh, everything's going to be cached um, in, in your, your green box. If your green box, your offline map is properly downloaded, you'll have all, all functionality of it. And then I have a couple here that I think would be good to jump back in to the web map. Cool. I wanna start pulling that up here. Yeah, you got it. And Hunter, do you mind giving up the oh, screen share? Yeah, that would help you, wouldn't it? Sweet. All right. It looks like it's caught up and you are up. All cool. right. Um, first question. Let's see. Um, how do I use the desktop version for pre-chip planning? Uh, what things to look for? Yeah, awesome. Great question. Um, we'll just actually, since I'm already in this part of the country, we'll just continue to use this Green River, Utah area as an example. Um, and this is actually a, a, a story. This is a, a true story um, about last year trip planning event that I did with a buddy of mine who was living in Arizona at the time. I was coming from Montana. We're like, hey, let's figure out where to go. It's kind of in the middle of Green River. That's where we landed on. We knew we wanted to ride a lot of dirt bikes, um, a lot of trails on dirt bikes, and we, and we landed on Green River. So for a trip planning location, I mean, location is going to be number one first to check off on your list, right? Um, but I'm going to look for, you know, if we're if you were really trying to off road and, and camp and then do all that fun stuff and not really rely on towns and stuff, um, I'm that's this is where I'm going to look. So let's just say we know we want to go to Green River. Uh, so I'm going to come here for this example. Let's just let's not worry about a fifth wheel or anything like that. Let's just have a little trailer and a couple dirt bikes. Um, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to be like, wow, like this, this whitewash area looks, looks pretty cool to ride. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to check. Yep. It's open. Cool. No fee required. All that good stuff. Um, might try to pull up some pictures of it. Spark arrest are required. That's another big one. Um, so I know I'm going to be around here. And then back to what I mentioned earlier, where I know BLM land, I'm going to search for BLM land. We know we can kind of, it's, it's, it's fair game. You can kind of camp there, for, you know, for 14 days. Um, and so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, all right, look, Green River, look at this road that comes right off of the exit, right off the interstate. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to come in here. Okay. High clearance trail width open dates. Cool. So I'm going to see this and I go, okay, I know I can get my truck and trailer in there. No problem. Sweet. That's step one. I'm going to keep riding down here, see if it connects and then just how to really even get to this area. Um, and then I actually, back to my story, we're meeting up with my buddy. We were actually coming into here 
um, and we drop the waypoint like right at this T. Um, so I'm going to get in. You can just scroll this thing and it will get super, super detailed for you. Um, so I come in here and you can clearly see on satellite like, OK, cool. There's some pull offs here. There's a little ditch there. Um, you know, maybe maybe that's too steep for the truck and trailer. Keep scrolling. It's like, OK, cool. Look at this road cuts right through this flat area. Um, I would come here. I would mark this. You know, you can come here, you can drop it. Camp area, you can say like, you know, camp night one. I'll save that waypoint. And then I I was, and I'd share that with my buddy or whoever you're meeting. Um, so that's really, that's the first step I would look for. And then from there, I mean, you it's fair game. You can do whatever you want. Um, you can ride, ride wherever from there. Um, or drive and then you'll notice on BLM land there's a lot of these two tracks um, you know that these are trails that kind of form naturally not natural I mean they form over the years from people just kind of I mean we all know how BLM land is like people just kind of go off and make their own stuff and so if you're like hey what the heck there was actually a trail here but it wasn't green well that's not green according to the county um, but there's still clearly a well-defined trail so whenever you see these little two track stuff um, that's really where you're going to, you're going to separate yourself apart from the crowds. Um, when you start looking like this and you start looking through the lens of like, okay, how do I get off the green trails? Um, cause most of these people, you know, most of these roads and stuff, people can just Google. Um, but this is where it's like really going to set you guys apart. Um, I'd come up here and I'd be like, oh, wow, look at this two track, like up and over this, this little bench. Like maybe that's a sweet campsite in there. Um, so that's kind of how I view it. If it, if it answered your question, um, whoever that was, if, if not, I can, I can go more in depth, but that's kind of the surface level of what I would do to plan, plan a camping trip. Yeah, no, that was perfect. Um, I have one here asking about, uh, syncing offline maps between devices. Yeah, great question. Um, so, and I might have not have mentioned it earlier, so I apologize for that. But if I come in here, all right. So we'll just keep using the same. I just I found out I'm gonna camp here. My buddy agreed. Cool. We're gonna meet here tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to tee up some offline maps. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go save new offline map. And for, for something like this where, you know, you don't need a ton of resolution, I'm just going to probably go here. I know we're going to be in whitewash area, so I'm going to save this. But to answer the question in syncing devices, when I save this on my desktop, if you were logged into the same account on your mobile, you're going to open offline in your mobile and you're going to see it pop up and it's and you're still going to have to download it. So in desktop, it just tees it up, but you actually need to go into your mobile and it's going to say, hey, continue with your download. And you're going to say yes. And then you download it on your phone, and then that will sync per account. Perfect. Let's see here. Um, for planning a trip, what's the best option now? Um, and is there anything that might be yet coming down the line um, to improve on that? For say that again, Hunter. For like planning a route. Okay. Um, what's the best option now versus uh, what might be uh, coming soon? Yeah, totally. So we we have some cool some cool stuff coming down the pike. Um, but for now, um, you know how how routing is going to be used. Um, hold on, let me make sure all my see my filters when I'll apply. There we go. Okay. Um, so right now, the best way around this, let's just use the same campsite for example. Um, I, I know this is the most streamlined way, but this is this is how it's got to be for now. So I'm going to go, go into my line tool and you can either free draw or click to draw. I'm going to choose click to draw. And I'm going to come in here and say like we wanted to come off I-70. Um, you can go down like this, this, this. And, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's like if there's obviously one road, it's one road. And then you can even jump ahead and do this and do this. And that's clearly like, oh, make a right down this road, right? Um, so that that right now is kind of the way to do it. Say you came up to this split, 
I'm going to go down here. Let's go up to this split. So that's just kind of how you have to plot your plot your stuff right now. You can do that. Change the color, change the style, change the weight. Um, I like to keep it like that. So then when you save it, it's actually um, it looks it looks nicer. Um, so that's kind of that's currently how you do it right now. Perfect. Let's see, and then I want to jump into 3D. Um, someone was asking if you can rotate the 3D map in web. Yeah, great question. I forgot to cover that. So I'll go back to, um, since the Missoula web maps already teed up with 3D, I'll just go back to Missoula. Um, so when you're at this angle, um, and it'll look it'll look kind of laggy when I'm doing it over a demo, but if you guys are at home doing it, it's actually gonna be pretty, pretty fast. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit control, and then you're gonna go up, down, rotate, rotate, um, zoom in, zoom out, same as you as you would. Um, but like you can get, you know, say we're at the type top of this hiking trail behind me. I mean, you can get pretty dang close and you can you can scale like this. Hit control and scale around mountains. Um, super handy to know what you're getting into. Um, or if you don't, if you don't know what's down a road and you're like, hey, I got this big fifth wheel or trailer behind me, like oh shoot, what do I do? Like, this is where this could seriously help you. Um, so control scroll. Perfect. And then I have a question here. Um, how does the app still know where I am when I'm out of service using offline maps? Yeah, you want you want me to take that, Hunter? Uh, yeah, I'll queue up a couple yeah, of questions. Yeah, so not a lot of so not a lot of people know this, but actually, I mean, most I mean, mostly all modern phones now they actually have GPS transmitters in them already. People are like, "What the heck?" Like, it's not you know because we're so accustomed to needing a, another device like a Garmin or something. But but phones phone technology caught up. Um, so like your phone can absolutely ping you if you're out of service, and so that offline mode tells your transmitters like, "Hey." Keep transmitting my position because I need this thing to work while out of service. Perfect. Let's see. Uh, three minutes left here. Um, are there, is there a way to know when trails are open and closed? Yes, there is. Um, so this might not be, I mean, this is going to be kind of hard to find right now because most trails, even in the high country, are, are open right now. And so I might struggle to find an example here, um, but let me try. So like you see all the greens, so that's all open. Green's all open, right? So gosh, there might not even, this time of year, they might be, here are some, here are some in Oregon. So this is what they're going to look like if a trail is closed. They're going to be the red or red dashed. And again, click on it if you don't know. Click on the trail and you're going to go, oh, actually, that's uh, that's closed. Um, so that's how you'd figure that out. And then, you know, backing up to the time of year, you know, a lot of Colorado, for example, doesn't open up until I can't remember mid-July or something like that in their high country. So a lot of those gates are still closed. Um, so based on the time of year, you're going to see a lot more red on the map. Right now, it's pretty green. Perfect. And then, wow, I see a couple feature trails there. Um, seeing two questions probably knock out at the same time. Um, one is, how do I judge trail difficulty? And how do I figure out what is appropriate for my off-road vehicle? Yeah, totally. Let me find... Uh... Let me find a featured trail here. Let's actually go. I was talking about the Rubicon Trail earlier, so let's go to the Rubicon. Um, so right here, just outside of Lake Tahoe, here's a featured trail. I'm going to click on it. Um, and then this is going to be Rubicon East Side. And so here you're going to say, you know, and keep this, you know, take this with a grain of salt because Obviously, everyone has different skill levels, um, but this is kind of got to, you know, give you at least a good idea. Like if something like this says, if, if our app says difficult and it's an eight out of 10, like you might 
you might think about, you know, maybe not taking my stock forerunner down it, um, stuff like that. So just use your best judgment. Um, but again, at the same time, it, it is, there's different driver levels, different vehicle types, all that stuff. Um, so that's just kind of how you, how you got to go about it. Right on. Perfect. All right. So it looks like we are at time here. Um, but um, this, again, is being recorded. So if there's anything you want to go back over, it'll be up on our YouTube channel uh, tomorrow. Um, so there's a live there. You can refer back to it and kind of go through any of the demos that there are. Um, we really appreciate you guys tuning in, taking some time out of your day to learn a little bit more about Onyx. And we hope that this inspires you to, to find your next adventure, uh, know where to go, and more importantly, know how to get home. Uh, so we really appreciate it, guys. Thanks.